taking a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to Vegas. Welcome to the number one poker radio show in the world. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of poker news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. That is me. How are we doing, everybody? We are live here at the World Series of Poker. You betcha. Having a great time. Enjoying the happy crowds, the excitement, the thrill that is the Colossus. 20, I think we're up to around 22,000 plus entries into this amazing tournament. And just uh, has been a scene like you would not believe. I mean, this is even crazier than a main event. And we are uh, just enjoying it all and taking it all in. I wonder, we, we may have a really good guest. Maybe. If he decides he wants to come on the show, if he will, he will, he will do the honors. <laughs> we were having a very interesting conversation before we came on the show. So we'll, uh, as soon as uh, he's ready, we'll sneak him in. I won't tell everybody who it is, though. You'll recognize him. He's got a few minutes. All right, he's going to sneak in here. Why not start this thing off right today with the 2004 world champion, the man himself, the king of poker, Greg Reamer. Greg, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. What's going on? Not much. Just trying to figure out. You're good. Oh, I don't hear anything through the headphones. Like, okay, just take them off. Oh, that's all right. I'll just do it without headphones. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Greg, uh, your impressions of the colossus at this point i know you've been having some fun in there so what's going on with this thing oh something's going on now there's all of a sudden a huge crowd they're not are they on break again because they're not heading this way towards the restrooms yet no they must be they must be moving some players around or oh, something i think they're breaking all the players from the poker kitchen and moving them somewhere yeah i experienced that last night i got out of the poker kitchen greg i have not been in the poker kitchen but i was pretty amazed when i heard they're even setting up tables there it was that, that's definitely like, ooh, that was thinking out of the box. So hats off to Jack Effel for that thought, or whoever came up with it for him. Well, what's your impression so far about how the tournament's been run? So far, everybody has been you know, pretty much saying things have gone pretty well in here. So It is running way, way, way more smoothly than I really thought it would be able to. And, and it's not because I don't think that like Jack and his staff can't do the job, but I just thought they were going to be facing, you know, it's an unknown you really don't know exactly what's going to happen and how things are going to work out. And so I don't care how good you are. I think all of us were expecting lots of huge problems. Yeah. And, and that just hasn't been the case. The, like the only negative, really, that I've heard of was that, you know, with the no shows or the late shows, your stack is in the well. Right. Now, for most World Series events, like, you know, if I register now for the No Limit Hyper Turbo tomorrow, and I'm not there when they start, my stack is going to be in play and right. be getting blinded out. Mm -hmm. And that's true for basically every event. They know which seats have been sold and which have not. And so that if you're late, you still pay blinds. For this event, they're not doing that. So even if that seat is sold days ago, until you show up, they don't put it out. And I understand the logic behind that. But it led to some problems because I heard a story of like people having to play heads up. Yeah, I because saw a couple of that yesterday. Two people too. are at the table. The other eight haven't shown. But especially if that was flight A, then we know every one of those other eight seats was sold. Mm -hmm. And the person just wasn't there for some reason. And yet now it's like, oh, wait, you and I have to play heads up. It's one thing if we're heads up and we're getting blinds off of eight dead stacks. Right. That's not unfair. But to tell us to just play heads up and even level one, you only have 100 blinds. I guarantee you, you and I whether we're both great, both horrible, or whatever, at playing heads up, it doesn't take anything unusual for one of us to go broke very quickly. Exactly. exactly. 100 big blinds just isn't that much. I haven't thought, though, of like what would be the solution. Because if you say, well, wait until there's at least four of you, well, instead of playing heads play. up, but what, if we, what if these guys don't show for the whole like two hours right. until they pick up stacks? Now we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs, and we can't walk away. Because if I walk away and two more people show up while I'm gone, now you're blinding my stack off. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I don't know that there's any great solution to the problem, but if anyone has a great idea, then like tweet it out to Jack Effel, you know, and his people and say like, hey, handle it this way. Um, I suspect the rationale was like on a day like today, flight C and especially later flight D, we've sold seats, but that guy bagged chips in an earlier flight and we haven't been able to process all of this to know that, oh, pick up the sixth seat at this table, mm -hmm. you know, either resell it or whatever. And we don't want to have like eight stacks paying blinds when maybe none of them are ever going to show. And that's a lot of extra chips that are being introduced into the field unnecessarily. Right. Um, I mean, it never looks good. You get to the final table and you're like, okay, this many people entered. There should be this many chips, but there's like way more than that on the table. Yeah, that, that does make a problem. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. look good. And maybe they could explain it away as like, oh, well, because we were blinding out so many stacks that even though it was the first couple of levels with small blinds, it still added up to a ton of chips. Um, but, you know, that's not a great solution either. So I, I, I'm not complaining in the sense that, like, how dare you do this, you know, again, to the World Series staff. But I would love it if we could come up with a solution where people don't have to play two or three handed with no dead stacks. Right. Yeah, because I, I know I was playing mostly seven and eight handed last night for the first yeah. probably four or five levels of the tournament. So that wasn't bad, though. Well, I even survived. if you're, like, five handed, it's not like... Oh, you know, two or three of us are destined to go broke by the first break. You know, you have enough chips that, you know, everyone might still be around. But heads up, unless you're both just super weak passive players, it would be almost guaranteed that one of you ought to be busted by the other, you know, within the first level or two. Right. And so that just seems a little unfair. And then, then what? Now you bust me, and then you just sit there like humdy dum. <laughs> like I got to. And then some other guy goes to say like, "Oh, is this table? Like, like what, what, how come there's no play? I, oh, well, it was just me and Greg, and I knocked him out. Now it's just you and me." And he's like, yeah, "What?" So I have yeah, to play then he's coming down and uh, down two to one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest, that doesn't matter yeah. in terms of his equity. I mean, it's not like this is the end of a tournament, and now you're a two to one favorite to win the whole thing, but. In terms of his equity in the prize pool is not changed because you have him two to one but a lot of players aren't going to see it that way and they're going to feel like well, this is ridiculous like now i'm a two to one underdog this guy's going to bust me you know because i don't have that many chips you know i mean for me personally i'm probably a better heads up player than the average person in this tournament by, by a good bit so it would be beneficial to me if i end up at a table playing heads up sure and then if I bust that guy, then great. I got a second opponent when he shows up, and now maybe he feels disadvantaged, and it's easier to push him around, and I can now beat him up for a while. You know, that would actually be awesome. Like, just beat people heads up, like, every 10, that would be fun, every 10 20 minutes, <laughs> knock out a guy and have someone else walk up and then knock him out. That yeah, would be a lot of fun. How would you like that be your first World Series event? You sit down, you're playing heads up in a tournament with Greg Raymond. Well, or just anyone who knows. I mean, I do a lot of commentary for things like HPTs and stuff where I'm doing live stream commentaries. And heads up is just something that a lot of players are really, really weak at, at doing. Right. Um, and it's not because they're bad players. It's because most of us have almost no opportunity to play heads up. Right. Unless you are like a heads up specialist, which means you have to be online to be a heads up specialist because there is no heads up games really available in the live world. Um, how do you get to play heads up? basically when you get to the end of a tournament so even if you're full time if you were if i was out there even playing 200 300 tournaments a year live which is pretty much impossible but even if i could play 300 a year live how, how often am i going to get to heads up if you play 300 times a year and you're the best player in the world you're still only going to get heads up a very few times correct yep. and then usually you're kind of short stacked at that point as well so it may not last that long so unless you're a heads up online specialist you just don't really get to do it and so I've seen these where I was like, oh, wow, this guy was like a great player at the full table. And he was even still doing really well, you know, even shorthanded. But then when they got heads up and now all of a sudden it's like, well, what is he doing? Like I've said that about someone like this guy was more aggressive 10 handed than he is heads up. Wow. That, yeah. And you're kind of like, well, what, what happened to him? <laughs> it was like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Like, wow, I'm first to act on, you know, on the button. And, you know, they're just unfamiliar and they're not, you know. 
or they might have some ideas about heads up strategy, but it turns out their ideas really aren't that correct. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's a problem. I mean, I did a live stream where they played in the neighborhood of like a hundred hands heads up and like twice someone folded their button twice someone raised their button and like 96 times they called the button wow between the two of them and oh. i was just like and, and it, so it's taken forever and i was just like raise please raise uh, but no he calls again and you know so like that was my commentary it was just like you know for hours just begging these guys to raise <laughs> you know yeah, and that's way too passive too i'd see too many times where they both neither of them had much of a hand and they just check it all the way yep you know, and I'm like, oh, Jack, I beat nine high or something. And I'm like, boy, both of you should have been thinking, like, there's a really, really good chance if I check this down, I won't win. Right. So why am I not betting at some point? Like, you limp your button, you know, and I, oh, 10 four off. Okay, I'll take a free flop, thank you. And then I flop nothing. And so I, I don't, I'm just going to give up on this pot I check. But you check behind me. And now here's, again, I have nothing on the turn. But it's like, okay, why not fire a bet? Like, you mm -hmm. didn't raise pre flop. You know, you checked behind me on the flop. This isn't like an overcard or something that now just hit. Something innocuous looking, but it's completely reasonable if I bet now that you can give me credit that I have bottom pair or second from the bottom. Or, you know, it's not that you'll think I have a big hand, but you can give me credit for a pair of yeah. some sort. And so if you don't have a pair, you'll fold. And since I only have 10 high, maybe you're folding the jack or the queen high or whatever, you know, high card that hasn't hit a pair you know if it came king queen seven and now three on the turn maybe you'll fold the jack high that has me beat or something like that you might even fold an ace high or something and then if i check to you and you're sitting there with nine high well why aren't you betting <laughs> it's like i didn't raise pre-flop when i had the option and i've checked twice yeah and you don't expect your hand to win at showdown so like why are you not like well there's got to be a pretty good chance greg will fold here was he's trapped me three times? I mean, I, I, I don't want to trap you three times playing heads up because, like, I'm running out of time to make money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I have a good hand, like, I'm, I'm running out of opportunity to get you to put chips in. You know, so it's like I got to start, if I'm going to win a lot of chips from you here, I got to start getting chips in this pot at some point. Well, let me ask you a question about winning chips with this Colossus event because, I mean, we're going to have what, about 100 million chips in play. I mean, it's going to be, for for the average everyday player that comes into this thing, yeah. they're, they're going to have never seen anything like this. And, of course, you've done a lot of poker training yourself. Yep. What advice do you give to people as they start to go through this tournament? You know, take us through the stages of what they should expect as they climb the ladder in this thing and... You know, and starting up with tons of chips in front of them. Well, I mean, to be honest, it's really very basic. Um, I mean, we could talk about things that I would maybe guess that they're going to see in terms of how their opponents are going to change. Like here at the very beginning of a day, you might get a lot of people who are ready to gamble it up big time. Whereas, you know, the bubble for this event might be people playing almost as tight as you see, like in the main event bubble. Um, and I could guess that that might be the case, but even if I'm right, that may not be the case at your table. Mm -hmm. So the real answer is forget everything else and just focus on your table. It doesn't matter what the average stack is. It doesn't matter what the big stack or the short stack is anywhere else in the field. It only matters who's at your table and how many chips do you have, how many do they have. So, I mean, if you you know, at some point later in this tournament have 100,000 chips and you're the chip leader at your table, but the average stack in the field is 150,000, that doesn't mean you need to like, oh, I gotta win chips because I'm running out of time or whatever. I mean, you're in great shape for your table, mm -hmm. play your table. Um, and maybe the same 100,000 stack at that table, you would be one of the short stacks and you would have to play a little differently. Right. But ignore everything else, because it doesn't matter. You can't win chips from the guy at the other table. And you can't lose to him either. So it doesn't matter what they have. Uh, if you're finally like on the bubble, well then it, it matters a little bit, but heck, for the bubble, we're gonna still have 2,000 players or right. something. So, I mean, it's not like you have to look around and wonder like, wow, is anyone shorter than me? Uh, unless you have one chip, someone's shorter than you. <laughs> right. Yep, Barry Schulman walking by yeah. saying hello. And looking dapper, by the way. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so just ignore all those other things and don't worry about chip averages and, you know, like, oh, I have to keep up with the chip average. You don't. I mean, yes, it's nice to have a good stack, you know, a healthy stack compared to the field. It's nice to have a big stack. But that doesn't mean you should be forcing the action just because, like, oh, no, I only have 50,000 and the average has gone up to 60. I mean, if you have a weak starting hand and you don't think the other players are going to all fold, then why, you know, why get out of line and try to steal? Yeah. You know, and if you think they're all going to fold, well, then you should be trying to steal no matter what your stack size. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's great advice. I mean, and, and that really is the best focus to have on this thing is just, man, you just got to keep an eye on what's going on or yeah. With you and forget about everything else because yeah. I mean there's doesn't matter there's thousands of people up I mean this is I mean this is going to be an exciting finish. You I mean, see somebody's a tweet gonna... and like oh someone over here just won a huge three way all in pot and now this, the average is eighty thousand and he has a million and you're thinking like oh my god I only have sixty thousand I'm screwed I can't win like no I mean look at it this way he has a million he has ninety nine million to go right you have sixty thousand so you have. You know, 99 million and change to go. <laughs> right. And, and so, yeah, in, in that sense, neither one of you, neither that guy with a million nor you with your slightly below average stack, neither of you is very likely to win this tournament. Mm. Yes, much. he's more likely than you, just knowing the stack sizes and nothing else. But it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean you should play different. Well, what's it been like for you uh, being in this event, you know, as a world champion? And there's so many new p players coming out here for the first time at the World Series, and you know, constantly, I'm sure you're getting a lot of attention. Yeah, you, know, you see, you just see is uh, people coming around here, gathering around, taking pictures, and and I'm sure yeah. people are requesting you know, autographs, pictures, and everything. What's it like uh, for you as a, as a former world champion being in this event and trying to deal with everything else other than the poker? Well, it's not really that new of an experience because it's a little bit like what it was back in like like 05 and stuff mm -hmm. i mean the poker boom was still booming and so you know the come to the world series in 05 or if i'm playing a, you know an event at the other times of the year you know i've already won the main event people know me but i'm playing something else tournament somewhere else you know of whatever sort there was a lot of people who were new and this is, oh, this is my first World Series, or this is my first tournament with this size of a buy-in, things like that. And so the Colossus really is kind of like going back to that familiar time when, you know, you could play in a bigger event, you know, where you could win big money like this. And yet a lot of your opponents, like, for me, this is a first of some sort. <laughs> so whether it's my first bracelet event or my first buy-in more than 100 or my first buy-in more than 1,000 or whatever it may be, they were new and and so for a lot of them they're like oh i don't you know i don't think i can beat all these players you know but i'm i'm here for the experience and you know to take home a story and stuff it's so like actually i got knocked out of flight c i don't know how much of that was part of it i'd already gotten short the guy has just sat down immediately to my left this is his first hand he's been dealt in and now i'm shoving all in for like nine blinds and, and he's like, ah, Greg, man, you know, first hand and you're testing me. And I'm like, sorry, I'm not trying to test anybody. And he's like, oh. He's like, well, you know, I, I want a story. And, and, and like, I call. Oh, and everyone God. else folds. And he says, if you have a pair, you're in great shape, you know. And, and I have sixes. And he has fives. And, and he didn't call because he thought, like, oh, technically this is correct. Like, I'm going to call nine to win Greg's nine plus the blinds, you know, to win ten and a half. I don't think he was thinking like, oh, I'm getting ten and a half to nine and, you know, I'm going to win frequently enough that it's, you know, a, a good gamble to call. I think it really was like, oh, well, I'm either going to like double up Greg and, hey, I can afford that because he's only got the nine blinds, you know, or I'm going to win and now I can tell everyone how I knocked him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I would used to get that kind of attitude a lot in that first year or two or three after I won the main event of people who would and sometimes even say like oh I did't even know I we haven't even played a hand yet and they're like oh I can't I know I can't win this heck I'll be lucky to make the money you know but I'm just I want the experience and all that and then they want a story to take home yeah and folding is not a story exactly like oh he raised okay. and I folded isn't a story um, they want to either beat you with the best hand or get lucky and suck out or if they lose and they go home and their friends like all new like oh you were going to go out and play your first world series 
then they're like, you know, when they're asked, how did you do? They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I played for a while, but eventually they busted me. But it took a world champ to do it. Yeah. And now I tell the story about how, like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, thought, I thought nines were good. I called all in. He had aces and beat me and da-da-da. But, like, you know, hey, so you, you had, like, in other words, it was only, like, I only busted because I had the world champ at my table. Yeah. And if it's not me, but some, you know, okay, it's not a world champ, but it's a really great player who their friends have heard of, you know, then it's still, like, you know, it took so-and-so to beat me. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, he's really good. I've seen him on ESPN, blah, blah, blah. So they get their story either way. Mm -hmm. And since they don't really expect to win, they're like, hey, you know, better to, better to lose with a story than to just lose to a bunch of people out that me and my friends don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we're, by the way, speaking of, we're going to be experiencing one of the uh, phenomenons here. Oh, like Greg yes, Mueller's. It there. is the toilet break. The, the next break here at the Colossus. Which is just an amazing sight, and uh, we've we've added security to the uh, the tripod here, Greg. As you can see, we've we've got the collapsible cone. Security. We've got the we've got the yellow ropes. So we're gonna see if we get through a break without somebody kicking this tripod. It's exciting. What do you, what do you think my odds are? You think I can uh, make it? It depends if these people who are kind of in a ring around it stay. That's good. You're, you're good. Yeah. We you know, right. if uh, if they all walk away though, you're drawn dead. That that's hinging on you probably. If you get up and walk away, I'm screwed. So. I, well, let me ask you this question: Is since it's been, you know, it's been God, eleven years since you won the world championship. What's the biggest changes in your life since that's ha that's happened to you? What are the changes? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it's not recent changes so much, but uh, you know, obviously, I was a you know regular nine to five type guy before. You know, I worked as a patent attorney for Pfizer, and so you get up in the morning, you go to work, you come home in time for dinner with your family, and take a trip out to the World Series, you know, for a week or so uh, every summer and, you know, played poker at Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun since I lived there in Southeast Connecticut. Um, maybe, maybe travel somewhere else for a poker event, but not that often. Um, you know, now it's just full-time poker and I'm on the road a lot. So it's good and bad. I love poker, so I love that I'm out here able to play in tournaments. I mean, like last year I played like 96 unique tournaments. Wow. Um, That's great. You know, obviously when I was working full time, I didn't play so many. Um, but even the downside is I'm on the road instead of being with my family more often. So it's, you know, got its pluses and minuses. I mean, I'm not going to recommend it unless you love poker. Yeah. If you're just like, oh, I don't really like poker at all, but I'm good at it and can make money. Well, then do something else for a living. <laughs> how, how do you still maintain that passion for the game after all this time? It's just, it's like anything else. I mean, like some people love whatever it is they love. They love fishing. They love watching hockey. They love, you know, kayaking, uh, you know, anything you could imagine, you know, knitting, you know, a physical activity, a mental activity, whatever it is. And it's like, you know, I could look at someone who does something like that and I'd be like, oh my God, that just looks like, that's like, like if, if I if I die and go to hell, that might be my sentence is to like do that the rest of my life, yeah. and I would hate it, you know. But they love it, and they might feel the same way about poker. Like oh, if if, if you make me if you force me to play poker for eternity, then I would be you know in pain and hate every moment of it. So it's I don't think there's any good explanation. It's just some activities you love and some you don't. How do you keep from getting burned out? I mean, because you do well, so much. I mean, other just, I, I you know, think it is the fact that if you love the game or not, if you love it, then you're probably not going to get burned out. If you don't really love it, it's not truly a passion, then you probably are going to get burned out at some point because you are not going to always be like winning, 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 no matter how talented you are. There's just no one who's so good that they just always win and never have any real losing streaks. Yeah. So... And, it's, and that's the tough time. That's when you get burned out is when you're on a losing streak. And I've had several losing streaks, and I wouldn't say it burned me out, but it certainly tests you, you know, and it makes it where, you know, it's, it's hard to maintain that positive attitude and, you know, but you just have to really focus and make sure that whatever you're feeling emotionally, you're still making intelligent decisions as you play each hand. Um, but some players, and you'll see it, you know, just moment to moment at the table because they're just winning or losing temporarily. Or like, oh, you've won a couple of good pots, and now you feel, I see the guy, oh, he feels invincible. 
and he loses a couple of pots and now he's all timid and scared and like oh I should like try to get it all in here and instead I'm throwing my hand away because I, I'm coming up with some scenario where you have me beat even though I have a really strong hand and so even like just one level to the next I'll see a person with this huge shift in attitude yeah. um, and I understand why it happens but it's something you need to try to avoid if you're going to do this for a living yeah. but even harder is when it's you know you're on a streak of like getting your butt kicked you know for weeks and months at a time then it is something you got to guard out that you're not being like too timid or too scared or too worried about like oh how am I going to lose this one maybe I should just like you know call here instead of raise because then I'll lose less but then part of the problem is now if raising was the better choice maybe part of the reason you're losing is because you didn't raise and the guy would have folded a hand that sucks out instead or something um, you know so that change in attitude can change your decision making and that's something that's hard to avoid but you need to be guarded against it yeah. I want to give the power of Greg Raymer by the way we had people gathering around here a few have trickled away here but this line always ran right next to me and now you're you're sitting here and we have people stopping by and checking everything out and obviously you still have a lot of popularity amongst the poker players that's right if you can move that line over halfway across the hall that's good what why do you think I hope, people I, hope it, I mean I showered so I hope it's not that I smell bad <laughs> why do you think uh, people still are drawn to you drawn to what, you. drawn to you as a player I mean and as a person I mean I was fortunate that when I won in 04 that was the most viewed final table between the original and the reruns on ESPN so it was like the height of the poker boom as far as television coverage was concerned and that just means that a lot of people saw me a lot even if they weren't trying to watch poker mm -hmm. um, you know I would run into someone like a bartender and he's like oh yeah I know who you are you know and he's like I hate poker to be honest he goes but you know I work here and so it's just on the TV all the time. There's always a, always some of the TVs on ESPN. So I would see you, and they just, man, they rerun that so often. They did. It was like, yeah. I kind of liked it at first, but then I kind of got, to be honest, I got sick of looking at you. <laughs> you know, and so it's like he knows who I am and might remember it forever because he saw so, you know, just so many occurrences yeah. of the show. And so I think that's part of it really is just that simple that, you know, if you were into poker at that point in time, then you were going to see me and see me a lot. And so people remember. And, you know, ESPN tried to play my story a lot like Chris Moneymaker. Yeah. I mean, and he truly was. I mean, that was, he had never played a live tournament before he came to Las Vegas that year. He played like a satellite or something beforehand just to like get a little experience at live he'd played online tournaments and he'd played live cash games so it wasn't like he was new to the game but it was his first live tournament ever <laughs> um, and so it, and it was real and, and he was you know a, a pure amateur he was not doing it as a secondary source of income or anything like that and so his story was very easily you know here is this kind of you know unknown you know very amateur player you know who doesn't have all the the skills and experience and yet he's winning it all and they wanted that story again because it played so well yeah and so they played up the fact that like oh full-time attorney you know amateur not a full-time pro they kind of ignored the fact that like oh well this was my third main event my sixth 10k buy-in my 500th or so live tournament you know that i had already final tabled big buy-in events that uh you know, I filed my taxes as a professional, like part-time professional poker player and full-time patent lawyer, but I'd been paying taxes as a professional poker player for several years, you know, and they didn't talk about any of that. Right. You know, it wasn't that they were trying to lie, but, you know, and then I think, again, for most of the fans, you know, they're not full-time pros. Usually the guy who's a full-time pro isn't a fan. Um, even if he likes you and respects your game and all that, he's not what you would call a fan at that point in his poker career. But the true fans, the amateurs, they're like, they can resonate better with Chris's story or with my story as it was portrayed 
than they can with, you know, especially the more recent champs who are young kids that are like, oh, well, he's been making X thousand, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year playing online poker since he turned 18, and now he's 23, and, you know, so they can't, you know, they, they don't see the connection with that story unless they're 23. Right. And even then, they're like, oh, but I'm not playing for a living online, and I haven't made tons of money playing poker live or online. And so even though they like that person, respect their game and all those things, they don't feel that kinship necessarily to the full-time pro. Right. Because, like, oh, well, that's not me. Exactly. I might want to be him, but that's not who I am yet. Yeah, well, we all know, you know, that uh, you've been such a great ambassador to the game. We're looking forward to seeing you in the rest of the World Series. And, uh, you know, main event coming up. You still get butter butterflies playing that thing. I mean, is it? I, I mean, do you, do you crave? Do you crave winning it again? Oh, absolutely. But I mean, I crave winning every tournament I play. Um, it's a funny thing too. I mean, you win any tournament, it feels really, really good. I mean, the funny thing is, at one level, like if I were to go win a tournament somewhere that paid, you know, five thousand dollars to first. As opposed to, let's say, if I finish second in the main event this year, and it pays five billion. At one level, I am going to feel better when I win the tournament for five thousand, yeah. rather than come in second for five million. Right. Because you won. Like well, I did the best anyone could do in this event today. Like no one surpassed me. You know, I am the champ of this event. And and we asked that exact question actually of a guy, a TV show I was doing. And his prize was five thousand dollars, and plus he had won a seat into the two thousand dollar tournament. So he's basically winning seven thousand dollars. But this happened to be um, God, I hate the fact that my memory is so bad. Uh, he finished second in the main event, maybe back in the early eighties or something like that. His doctor, God, I'm so bad with names, but. He's like, his name sounded real familiar to me. And I'm like, hey, I know this name, you know. And we're doing the win, the interview after his win. And this other guy is doing the interview. He's like a full-time radio host in Dallas and, and had this job. And so he's the play-by-play. -play and, and I tell him, I said, when you do the winner's interview, you ask him this. What felt better, winning this tournament tonight for an extra 5000 or when he finished second in the world championship for a quarter million? Hmm. And he asks him the question, and the guy just starts laughing. <laughs> and he's like, you're right. He goes, this feels better. Yeah. He goes, that was the world championship and a quarter million dollars. This was 5000 yeah. He goes, well, this feels better because I won. I didn't lose to that other guy. I won the whole thing. And, and so, I mean, that's, it, just, it always feels better to win. Yeah. Well, and so you always crave the win. No but, I mean, if you want to guarantee me second place right now. I, I'm sure you'd take it. I will take it. And, and I will smile when whoever it is knocks me out, heads up, you know, and uh, and then I will pay you back the five million that you're giving me now since you're guaranteeing second prize. Oh, wow. I mean, you're putting up the five million. Oh, I'm I, putting up the five yeah, million. Yeah, because that way wow. you're guaranteeing that I'm going to finish second. So you're obviously paying me second place. And then I when I actually win, I will give it all back, okay. you know, and sure. just keep the original five. I mean, and if it turns out it's only four and a half. Well, I'll, I'll give you that four and a half plus another half. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. You know, that. but I mean, since you're guaranteeing <laughs> me second, I presume that means that's how you're guaranteeing it, is you're paying me up front. Sure. Right? Or else it'll be my soul, one of the two. And uh, so that's, but yes, I would accept that deal. Okay. Fair enough. Heck, right. if you want, guarantee me second and you get half. Hey, honey, we got two and a half mil sitting around? Yeah. Never mind. See, she already. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg, I want to wish you all the best this year. I tell Thank you what, you, we would love to see you pick up a, a bracelet, maybe win the main event again. It would well, be something I'm, I'm still special. shooting for four because no one's ever done four in one year. I'm not saying it's very likely. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. I'm not predicting it or anything like that. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be some kind of like ridiculous braggart. I'm just saying, but that's always the goal. Like, let's set the record the most ever. So if I get one, I'm going to be thrilled to death. If I get four, well, you can replay this and edit it so that I'm predicting it. There you go. <laughs> Sounds good. Otherwise, no, I'm not predicting it. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll make sure we get that clear. Well, Greg, thank you for coming over. Thank it's always you, Mark. a pleasure to see you. Thank you, One too. of the great ambassadors of the game. Enjoy thank it. Thank you. As of ever, always.
Greg Raymer, everybody. Stop Thank you. By. Thank you, sir. Hey, and after a great interview with Greg, we got to get a commercial break in here. And uh, Greg, look at this. He's gonna. He's got his adoring fans coming up here. They are uh, saying hi to him. One of the one of the great personalities in poker. All right, so let's step back and get a commercial break in, and we'll be right back here live on the Mark Oak Show. We're here at the World Series. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Stick around. We will be right back. Let's return to the I'm here with two-time WSOP bracelet winner, Rep Porter. Rep, you just launched a new poker training site, thepokeracademy.com. What's one tip you can give to players that will immediately improve their game? I would say that if you're not currently using your chips as weapons to win other chips, you need to start doing that. One great way to do that is to raise more frequently pre-flop when it's folded to you in the cutoff or on the button. You should be opening with 40 to 70% of your hands depending on the tournament situation. You'll find that you win the blinds and andes preflop at a very high rate. And even if one of your opponents calls you, you'll still have chances to win the spot. Sometimes you'll make a hand, and other times you'll be able to win the spot with a simple continuation bet. That's a great tip for you from Rep Porter at ThePokerAcademy.com. It's a completely different kind of training site. ThePokerAcademy.com offers a no-limit tournament course that gives you a comprehensive strategy from the beginning through all the stages of tournament play. Use the link ThePokerAcademy.com slash Mark to get a free 166-page course guide when you buy the course. That's ThePokerAcademy.com slash Mark. PokerShop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. PokerShop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bump stools, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your your game night a great night go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10 percent off your purchase with a code hoke h-o-k-e you supply your friends we supply everything else live it love it pokershop.com there's nothing better than sitting down to play poker with good friends and cutting loose. And that's what you're going to find when you tune in to Poker Night in America. Poker Night in America is revolutionizing televised poker in a big way. With all the action you love and the hilarious fun you've been missing, come take a seat at the table with all your favorite players. Old and new with Poker Night in America. Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on CBS Sports Network. And don't forget to visit the show online at Poker Night so pull up a chair and join us Mondays on Poker Night in America. Join us for the PPC Poker Tour stop right here in Las Vegas at the Golden Nugget for the PPC Golden Nugget Aruba Satellites, June 4th and 5th. Event starts both nights at 5 p.m. with a $175 buy-in and a guaranteed $4,000 PPC Aruba World Championship package up for grabs both nights. So come on out for the PPC Poker Tour at the Golden Nugget Las Vegas, June 4th and 5th, and check out the PPC Poker Tour stops at ppcpokertour.com. See you at the Golden Nugget for the PPC Poker Tour. Only a donkey would call my pre-flop bet with a deuce tray. Hey, deuce tray is my lucky hand. And besides, they were suited. Man, I played that hand great. <laughs> that was a real share my pair hand. Share my pair. The best way to share your poker stories with friends. For free. Available from the iTunes App Store and Google Play. Download the app now. Heads up, everyone. It's time for the ABC Chinese Poker App Tip of the Day. Always double check for fives and tens before you set your hand. A five or a ten is needed to complete every possible straight, so make sure you aren't shutting yourself out by misplacing those key cards at the start of the hand. 
leaving the door open to as many hand possibilities as you can will lead to big points and lots of winning sessions. Want to get in on the Chinese poker action with over 1 million games played every week? Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on your iPhone or iPad today. From Vegas to Miami and all over the world, it's the number one Chinese poker app. ABC Chinese Poker. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back. And yeah, that's my wife. She's... Share my pair. Oh, good God. Really? Yep. I'm in charge of advertising. you got to talk into that microphone. Oh, I'm in charge of advertising now. They said so. Wow. Who, who said that? They tweeted me and they said that. Who? Share my care? Yes. Well, good. Maybe they'll pay you more than they paid me to sponsor the booth. We are back here and uh, want to thank Greg for taking the time to hang in there and a uh, great interview. Uh, right now, by the way, going across, on across from us in the Brasilia room, uh, Michael Wang is picking up his bracelet uh, ceremony going on at the, as we speak. Uh, Wang winging his first World Series bracelet. We're going to you know, get into the news. You guys can just, uh, she's not going to be any piece of this whatsoever. Are you kicking me out? Well, I'm not saying I'm necessarily kicking you out. I'm just saying you're probably going to be worthless going through some of this stuff. No I offense. I have a lot to say about the traffic in the halls. Okay. And parking. But but I want to I want to say this. I mean, you know, and, and we mentioned it during Greg's interview, but it, the lines, the bathroom lines, whenever they've been here, have always been, you know, like right on top of us almost on the table. And when Greg was being interviewed, and this, you could speak for this, the mm-hmm. line went looped around us. Well, because we had a little door. bit of a crowd in front of yeah, the table I mean, taking pictures well, yeah, and because, selfies. With because, because people want to see Greg. Yeah. I mean, that that's power. I've never had, I mean, I've never had that happen when we've been down here that a guest has been able to make the line go across the hallway. He needs to sit here every break. Uh, yeah, I think so. Greg, can you, can you do that? You don't mind just sitting here and doing shows every day and... You're not worried about playing poker, right? No? <laughs> uh, see, there's that guarantee second in the main thing again. I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe we can talk about it. I'll tell you what. You can guarantee me third. Third? It's still a deal. Okay. Third, third might be a deal. We'll, we'll try and swing that. All right. Michael, uh, Michael Wang in there getting the bracelet. And uh, let's uh, take a look at what is going on so far uh, here at the World Series. Uh, Michael Wang, of course, winning event number two. Yes, it's him. <laughs> uh, a big comeback for him as he manages to knock off oh. Bryn Kenny yesterday. Sorry, just to get all once again, we're live, so those you know all this kind of fun stuff happens. Uh, Kenny was up two to one, but Wang manages to make a comeback, including, including picking off a big bluff, and wins that championship. Uh, Artur Corin finishing third. Greg Merson. Another former world champion finishing fourth. Jason Wheeler was short stacked there for a while, made his way back into fifth place. Uh, Amir Lavat, former November Niner, finishing in sixth. Joey Banks in seventh. Long win in eighth. Byron Caverman, Caverman in ninth. Doc Sands rounding out your top ten. So a very good final table as uh, Michael Wang ends up walking out with a World Series of Poker bracelet. So congratulations to him. Uh, we go to event number three, the $1,500 Omaha High Low 8 or Better Tournament. And uh, let's get your chip counts on there. Uh, play, I, th- is, I think that might be resuming in uh, about 15 minutes. Uh, Kelly Vandenheim out of Omaha, Nebraska, your chip leader, uh, 466000 A nice little lead on Thomas Taylor out of Canada, of Victoria, British Columbia, at three ninety five. Win Tran in third, J.C. Flarnoy in fourth, Eric Crane is in fifth, uh, Andrew Ye in sixth, Eric Wasserman in seventh, Michael Stewart in eighth, James Juvanic, Juvancic in ninth, and Tobias Hassan in 
10th place to uh, kick off that event number three, the Omaha High Low today. Uh, some other big names in there, Robert Mizraki hanging around there in 14th, and he is one of the dangerous players in mixed games. You did not want to be playing him as Rocky in these, and he is uh, at 184,000 ships, so still plenty of time for him to get things rolling. Our good buddy Raymond Davis finally making a, a nice run here in a bracelet event, and uh, maybe this would be the World Series for Raymond to have that breakthrough. Uh, Davis at 170,000. Uh, going down through some of the other big names, John Monette. That guy just doesn't ever go away here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, Monette at 125. Uh, keep running down here. Uh, because there weren't a whole lot of notables through uh, this tournament. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, they are underway. Uh, we've lost about, uh, we're down to 42. I think they started the day with 49. So uh, there you go. So that's your uh, notables remaining in the Omaha High Low. Once again, currently led by Kelly Vanden Vandenheim. Kelly Vandenheim. Uh, event number four, the three thousand dollar Nolan and Holdem shootout, and the world is going to be buzzing about this event because guess who's in it? That's right, the man, the famous actor, and a hell of a great American, James Woods, is uh, now in third place in that tournament. David Peters uh, leading the way. Um, just looking at the chip counts right now, uh, Peters at six hundred eighty-one thousand. Brian Lemke, another great player, he is in second, five forty-six. Woods in third, 495,000. Leo Volpert at 454. Nick Petrangelo at 450. Derek Bowers at 437. Jason Less, 423. Andres Hoivold, a very nice guy, by the way, uh, in eighth at 410,000. Jeffrey Griffiths at 317. And Lonnie Harwood uh, in a little bit of trouble. Of course, she is uh, one of the last women to win an open bracelet. She is at 64,000 chips so Lonnie Harwood got a long way to go to come back on that but the world watching to see if James Woods can pick up a World Series of Poker bracelet and impressively enough in a shootout event I, I think shootouts are one of the hardest tournaments to win at the World Series you know, because you've got to win those tables uh, there's no hanging around in fourth place on a uh, fourth biggest stack on the table you got to get the job done and James Woods now one more table away from winning a World Series of Poker bracelet. And, of course, the one everybody's talking about right now, it's been going on all week, the Colossus, the one I busted out of last night. I played like crap. I was not happy, but that's all right. I learned. Um, we'll get the uh, chip counts up there for that in just a second. Two flights underway. We, we are hearing right now, they've not officially announced the entries, but uh, we're talking around, hey, what's up? Uh, we're talking around 22 to 23,000 entries uh, in this tournament. Uh, not many spots left in Flight 1D as uh, that thing will close out tonight. Here are your chip counts. Uh, actually, I'm going to get some early ones from 1C. We'll come to those in a second. Let's get the 1A up there on the board. Your Flight 1A leader, Ty Duracas out of Los Altos Hills, California, Bags 179,100. He leads the way on that one, followed by David Song at 140,600. 140, Jose Franco, 139,3. Mohamed Ayash at, from Chicago, 137,7. Frank Williams from Derby, Kansas, 133,4. Uh, Eric Kaufman at 125,9. He is out of uh, right here in Las Vegas. Casey Miller, 120,500 out of Sam Samamish, Washington. Uh, Sierran Corbett out of Dundalk, Iran is here, and uh, he has uh, put up an eighth place stack in that flight, followed by John Walker and William Akima. Uh, some of your notables just going down the list here. Daniel Strelitz uh, managed to bag 101,000 yesterday, along with so many others. I mean, this if I went through this list, it could take all day. But uh, just going to Ryan Van Sanford, guy I know from Florida, pretty solid player. Gets off to a good start. Of course, if I'd have just gotten a massage from Denise yesterday, I'd have felt like a winner. You know? She, she didn't even come over to my table and ask. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> uh, Dan O'Brien bagging yesterday, 74-5. Uh, Kyle Bowker, 75-3. Uh, gets himself into day two. Uh, yeah, and, of course, I'm sure there's many others, but that is a long list, like uh, Dan Heimel or Kevin O'Donnell on the big board in flight or a day 1A. 
We go to flight uh, day 1B, the one I got to play in yesterday. And Ian O'Hara, that's a dangerous name to have at the top of the board out of Boca Raton, 184,000. Michael Rocco out of Tustin, California, 158,1. Uh, Urban Labor, 126,100. Michael Greeby out of Warren, Michigan, 125,600. Brian Pincus from Covina, California, 124,600. Christopher Rhodes out of Shingle Springs, California, 123,400. Marco Gasparovic out of Croatia, 123,100. Brandon Sheen, Sagamore Hills, Ohio, in eighth. Uh, Alejandro Duque, there's another one. I actually I believe I played against Alejandro last night uh, out of Miami, Florida, 114,000. Uh, Kerry Jean Craigie out of uh, Seven Oaks, the United Kingdom, 10th. And uh, let's see who else we've got here. Uh, any other nobles towards the top of the list? Uh, Nick Palma at 105,200 in that flight. Uh, let's keep going down through, see what else we have for you. Da -da. Hmm, let's see. Rachel Kranz, I've uh, known her. She's uh, one of the regulars at the Borgata. Uh, she is puts up 74,400. Uh, just keep on going down this list. Uh, Sean Drake, of course, uh, one of the controversial ones from uh, last year, uh, 68,600, but, of course, a uh, good guy. Uh, who else do we have here? Antonio Payne bags, 65,200. And I think we're going to stop about there. Oh, Zoe Kareem. We got Zoe Kareem there bagging 62,600. So there's flight uh, 1B. Of course, 1C just underway. Uh, probably not too much to report on that, but we'll give... Patrick Chan, his day in the sun photo or uh, screenshot that one for you as you, he's the listed as the current chip leader at 35,000. So not too much happening there in uh, flight 1C. Yes. Can we talk about um, your play in the class this Disappointing. Can we talk about what our daughter thought of it? Well, we're getting to that okay, story. Okay, good. Why doesn't everybody just let me lead my show? Because well, I'm here. Now I'm in charge. No, not even, not even a chance of that. Well, of course, one more flight coming up tonight. You can still get in there and play. Um, looks like uh, another group has been moved as they are headed into Brasilia, including uh, just saw Aaron Massey headed by. I'd love to, if I had the chance, I'd switch to our super, our extra super cam. I, I could put on the board real quick, but you're not going to see many people walk by here. Because the parade's over now. Yeah, it pretty much is. But there you go. There's your uh, there's your cam. We got <laughs> got the trail end of the line on there for you. But we do have we do have our uh, player cam up and ready to go. So if you we have a chance to say hi to people, of course we had Greg on, so we really didn't want to pop the cam over his head. That would have been kind of stupid. But while we do have a second. Uh, why don't we take a minute and say hi to all of our great sponsors of the show. Of course, uh, Mark Hoke Show on KSHP 1400 here in Las Vegas and KSHP.com. So I do appreciate all you guys listening Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And one of our listeners, thank us for telling him to get in the registration line early. He was pretty happy about that. So make sure you listen to the show. You get all sorts of great tips. That's for sure. The Poker Academy uh, Of course, Rep Porter was on the show yesterday, and if you want to learn some how to play great tournament cash game poker, let's go to PokerAcademy.com and check out the videos by the former World Series of Poker bracelet winner at PokerAcademy.com. And uh, Becker, you have me, and actually go backslash Mark on that. That helps us out a little bit. ABC Chinese Poker, the addictive game that everybody loves to play on their phone. It is my go-to game on our app on my phone he's on always flights. playing it and uh, in the airport abc chinese poker you're gonna have a great time pick it up today download that to your iphone or ipad immediately blue rail.net our good friends uh, bob or good friend bob lesk over at blue rail master website designer check it out today at blue rail.net they do build websites how far do you want to go blue rail.net and, of course, uh, coming up here on the screen, you'll see the PPC Poker Tour. we got our good friends uh, Brian and Sandy running an event coming up here at the Golden Nugget. Two satellites to Aruba, guaranteed 4000 
dollar Aruba World Championship prize package is available for you at the Golden Nugget. Uh, both satellites starting at 5 p.m. on Thursday and Friday this week. So check them out at ppcpokertour.com. Get over there to Golden Nugget, and uh, we'll be live reporting those events as well. Good friends, pokershop.com, 10% off with the code HOKE. All your great poker supplies. Just check it out today, just like I just did at uh, pokershop.com. 10% off for everything for your man cave poker room. Cards, chips, whatever you need, they've got it. Nevada Poker League, man, you want to play poker for free? You, know, you came out here, you played the Colossus, you blew the bankroll, you're done. At least so you think. Go over and go to NevadaPokerLeague.com. 20 locations in Las Vegas. You can play for free, cash and prizes, and lots of great company. Check it out today at Nevada Poker League. Share my pair. Share my pair. Oh, dear God. Uh, terrific app for your phone. If you get tired of telling everybody what the hands are that you're playing, you don't want to have to tell a story 4,000 times. All you have to do is download this app to your phone. It takes a minute to input everything, and you make a video of your hand. Very simple. So download it today. And we have Share My Pair patches. Come down and get a Share My Pair patch, and if you do a tweet it out, you can actually, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, you can actually win a book from Dan Negreanu. Brian, that's, of course, Katie Stone, Katie Dozier, Jen Shahadi. Now, all the great ladies on the team, check them out today at grindets.com. Of course, Poker Night in America. 10 p.m. Eastern, 5 or 8, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time for the number one poker television show in the world right now, Poker Night in America. These kids have a great time on there, so check it out. And of course, uh, I got to do a live stream for them as well. It was pretty cool. And once again, uh, follow us on the show at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show, KSHP 1400, AM in Las Vegas, and KSHP 14 or KSHP.com around the world. We certainly appreciate everybody enjoying the show and listening to it. Pretty cool. There you go. That takes care of the sponsors. How about that? Yay. Katie Stone, Katie Dozier, Jen Shahadi, Jamie Kerstetter, the four grindettes. I didn't say Jamie. That's terrible. That's right. You're fired. Yeah. (laughs) I've only been working for like three and a half years. It's all good. All right. So that's... uh, there's your sponsors, and we do have our updates in for what's happening here at the World Series right now. Um, yes, I, I did get embarrassed by my daughter this morning. Badly. You got burned. I got destroyed. Uh, for those that did not see it on social media, uh, this morning uh, I told my daughter I played in the World Series last night. She is six years old. And she said, did you win? And I said, no. And she responded with, I wish you were Chad Holloway, because then you'd win. Of course, Chad Holloway, a poker news, good friend of mine. So apparently my daughter uh, wishes I was Chad Holloway. He's up on a pedestal, for he sure. Is, apparently. So thanks, Chad. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chad. Unbelievable. Got destroyed on that. But I want to say about the Colossus, uh, you know, I got to have a great experience in that tournament uh, last night, and what an amazing evening it was to see all these players playing i actually had to play in the poker kitchen yeah they have there are tables set up in the poker kitchen right i was just explaining off camera to a thoroughly confused gentleman why there were tables in the poker kitchen because there's no room (laughs) (laughs) we need more space so you know i escaped the poker kitchen but unfortunately did not escape uh, the pavilion room and was ousted around late on level eight last night but it was a great time, and, and I, I want to give kudos to the World Series because this, this could have been a logistical nightmare, but they did such a great job running you know, the flight that I was in last night. You know, and I did see some, some points very early on where players were playing two and three handed for a little bit, but uh, that didn't last too long. Uh, but, it was, but it did make for a very interesting situation with the, uh, the players having you know, the stacks not that were sold not being put out, but the seats not being given until about level three when they consolidated the fields down as since until the players you know showed up and then they just threw them in. But it was a, a pretty entertaining uh, entertaining night and a very well-run event, and it's, it's hard to believe that at a poker tournament that's going to have 2,200 pl- or 22,000 entries, 
I mean, somebody's going to win it. Yeah, they're going to win a lot of money. I mean, you know, you know, wife here knows it's hard enough to win a poker tournament with three tables. <laughs> yeah. To get through 22,000 plus entries uh, is just going to be one of the great feats in poker. And, uh, you know, like it or not, uh, you know, you can say it's going to be somebody that's really lucky. You know, you may get a professional who, you know, got gets through. But, you know, whoever wins this is going to be very blessed to have sure. picked up that title. So, uh, of course, uh, that thing is not going to be wrapping up for a few more days. But we have our last flight coming up tonight uh, here starting at 7 p.m. For those of you, by the way, that are listening uh, out there and you're planning on coming down 7 p.m. is the new start time. They pushed them up just because for logistical reasons. They did it last night, too, which resulted in a log jam that I think put me on tilt out here a little bit. Did it Cause, really? Well, because there were a lot of people down here at 6. Mm-hmm. The tugging of the doors, the asking of the questions. I just want to punch somebody. I really well, that's did. what happens when you get so many people together in one but place. I, but, but I will say this. What? Somebody did almost get punched last night. How? What did they do? So, I mean, this is honestly got a true story. I'm standing right here at the table on one of the breaks because I'm paranoid, so I wanted to come oh, out and keep an eye on story. everything. Guy comes over and puts an empty beer bottle oh. right on the corner of our table. Rude. And I said to him, sir, could you please rem- take your bottle off the table? This is you know, my, my radio show's table. No. Tries to walk away, and I kept uh, explaining to him that I do not appreciate his decision. You know, wasn't happy about it. He refused to get it. I ended up picking the bottle up and taking it off the table and giving it back to him. He wasn't happy about that call either. You were going to punch someone right before you played in the Colossus? I wasn't going to punch him. I was during the Colossus. Oh, during the Colossus. During the Colossus. Or was he going to punch you? He was, uh, he was, was getting a little chippy. He was getting a little chippy. He was feeling froggy. Well, after the beer, sure. I ignored him. But, but yeah. But to, just to warn everybody, yeah, like we're taking some extra measures down here tonight. So please don't sit in my booth. Don't sit in Mark's booth. Don't. He's very protective of his booth. No, please don't. It's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. I had to go to Walmart and buy rope because there's, of this. There's other, there are other booths that you can sit in. That I don't care if you sit in them or not. But mine, not one of them. Not You're going to come in tomorrow and this thing is going to be all rearranged. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. All right, so that's about where we are uh, right now here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, Flight fi- uh, 1C still uh, moving on here as uh, they're, mm, they're, they're only uh, not even halfway, th- well, about probably about halfway through. I think they're about level 6. A couple of events coming up here uh, starting tomorrow. Of course, the Colossus has taken up the Friday and Saturday here for the most part. But we do have a couple of uh, final tables uh, going to be played out here shortly. But uh, event number six tomorrow, the $1,000. Yeah, this is one you'd probably like because it, it goes really fast. The Hyper Hold'em. Oh, I'd love that if I played. This is a, this is a new event uh, here at the World Series of Poker. And I'm going to pull the structure sheet up here. How fast does it go? Well, you know what? I was just pulling the structure sheet up here. Twenty uh, Day one levels are 20 minutes. That's it. 20-minute levels. It. So it's going to be a fast, uh, fast-moving tournament. Typically, levels around here are between 40 and 60. That is and fast. Turbo's 30. So, yeah. So this is going to be pretty interesting. And we'll probably get to watch uh, people bailing out of that thing right and left coming out of Brasilia. But that event kicks off tomorrow along with the ten thousand dollar limit deuce to seven triple draw low ball championship the 10k title event in that discipline uh, also starting tomorrow at 4 p.m and starting on monday two events kick off there as well event number eight fifteen hundred dollar pot limit hold'em event and the fifteen hundred dollar raz event so all you crazy razites there's a chance to come out and play that game so make sure you Hop in here on Monday for the 1500 And then, uh, real quick, on Tuesday, $10,000 heads up, No Limit Hold'em Championship, one of my personal favorite events, the mono e mono struggle. Pretty cool. Uh, that one uh, starting at noon. And also then on Tuesday, event number 11, the $1,500 Limit Hold'em Tournament. You go from the excitement of heads up to the bet. 
Meh. Race. <laughs> Did you just really call Raise. that event meh? Cap. Bet. Raise. Call. Call. Raise. Cap. Is it like the redheaded stepchild of the event? No, it's uh, limit, it's limit. not as popular, but it's gonna, but it, but always brings out some great players. So we're looking forward to seeing that, that limit tournament going on. Of course, uh, you know, we were talking to Rep Porter yesterday. who loves limit, and uh, that's one of his goals. He wants to win a limit title. So maybe the man from the poker academy is gonna pick up a bracelet in that fifteen hundred dollar limit tournament. That'd be so awesome. that's your uh, upcoming events here at the World Series of Poker. It is gonna be a fantastic week here. Of course, so Friday coming up, the big one. They've set these uh, tournaments up to be the big weekend tournaments. The Millionaire Maker is back for its third year. Winner guaranteed one million dollars. One million. One million dollars. So that one uh, is your event there. And look, uh, look who's here, just in time. Look who's here. Welcome I don't think I really hello. wanted to be here, but uh, I think. Why would play wouldn't you? Oh my gosh! What is this guy doing? He's he's, he's going to get a picture of us. We have oh like no God. pictures of us. I'm not going to say who it is yet. Just make sure you get my uh, get my thin side, sir. <laughs> As we awkwardly pose for photos on air. I'm just yeah, we're live on the air. <laughs> Pretend you're not there. No. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's that that's usually what happens. I mean, that's usually what happens when you're that's not. That's usually there. what happens. I take a beating. It's pretty bad. But uh, yeah, there is a, a, a three time, three time, three time. That's that's your hint. Yeah, Chad Holloway. <laughs> I think we've had enough Chad oh Holloway God. after this morning. <laughs> let's let, let's see if this gentleman will take a minute or two and, and join us here briefly on the show. She doesn't mind. Get in here. You're the man. I wish this guy would have been a zombie in the book. He should have been a zombie. I would. I, He's scary enough as is, but to have this man as a zombie. What's up, guys? I think it would be interesting. Let's move over just a hair there. Yeah, we had Greg Rayner slightly off the camera there, but yeah, you know, it's ironic. You know who you're following on the show here? Greg Raymer. Is that right? Yes. The irony is thick. It is thick, isn't it? Because we're, we're on the same team, you know. Yeah, you, you, you are on now the on the same Blue Shark team. Optics team. It's a little, you know, a little. We both uh, yeah. do HPT viewing parties. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever checked one of those out on my Twitch channel. They are channel. very cool. Uh, so if anybody's listening who hasn't, it's what, when we take a whole Heartland Poker Tour episode and uh, just break it down and pause and rewind and over and over and over, we just like focus on those players. And uh, you guys might know this, Greg Raymer did that for the live stream a few times. Mm -hmm. And one time, actually funny Greg Raymer story, one time he was doing the uh, live stream analysis and the internet connection went down in the casino that they were at. Okay. And he w kept on doing his analysis, and they, they came in, and they, the production team was like, hey, Greg, Greg, y you can stop. No one's watching. And he's like, you know what? I think I'll just continue. Wow. And he goes ahead and continues with his live analysis to nobody. Wow. Nobody. I know that feeling. But uh, I always <laughs> like that story. I like that's that story. Great. That's just imagine like the world champion, you know, the guy who has won four HPTs, doing a, a live commentary, to just to, to nothing. It's good practice. <laughs> it's like you know? it's like if you were gonna do a show and uh, you know you're like you're recording it, and like you have the like the video cassette recorded going, and there's just like no tape in there. You're like. Yeah. Just practicing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah. What did he say? A lot. Did he talk about me? No. Not at all. That's disappointing. I didn't <laughs> ask. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't cross my mind to start that. But maybe someday we'll get you guys on the show together. Because I'm friends with both of you guys. I mean, yeah, I imagine that would probably, it would probably be fine. I like, I like Greg fine. Yeah. Well, you got your first cash of the World Series. Yep. Earlier. I did. So congratulations on that. Nice start for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm one for one, I guess, because uh, my, my first bullet of the Colossus doesn't really count until the Colossus is over, right? right. If, I, if, I, if I cash in tonight's bullet, I, I feel like I can say I'm two for two. Correct. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm batting 100%. Okay. And it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Uh, today, you know, they, uh, they, they got me. 
but I, I got it all in on a flop, um, with you know having the guy drawn to three outs, and he did. He got mm-hmm. there, but all in, you know, it's like I, I put 250 in pre-flop and 4,500 in post-flop when uh, when I I had even better than aces versus sevens. You know, mm. I feel like this is the way that uh, one of these guys is gonna win. Is he's just gonna keep on hitting those three outers? Over and over and over, because the only way they can beat me, Mark, is to bad beat me. Well, you know, I and I'm going to say this that you know we've been friends for a long time, and you know, obviously you're still a you know, long still time. Feels like forever. I know, Jesus. doesn't it though? <laughs> 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 but you know, I remember seeing you here at the World Series you know, three years ago, for example, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it just seemed like such a drag to you. You know, you were really kind of down and. You know, not knowing where you were going with your career and thinking about, you know, going back and trying to get your, you know, get the law thing finished up. And, you know, you just weren't real happy. But I got to tell you, over, you know, especially over the last year or so, that demeanor has changed. And, and you really seem to have that swagger back. <laughs> that with swagger. The, with, with the maturity, too. You know, I mean, when you, you know, when that, all that success hit, you were really young. And now, it, you know, you, it's starting to come back. You won a bracelet last year. And there's there's a different feel around here right now. Do you feel the same way? I feel really excited about poker right now. Uh, I would say three years ago, not so much. I mean, Black Friday just hit. Poker was in a decline. It still is in a decline. You know, you look at poker, it still is in a decline. I mean, the numbers are, are going to be down a little bit this year, even though we're sitting here in the Colossus. But if you look at, like, the Omaha High Low event, or you look at the 5K event, or the employee event, the numbers are all down. You look at the, you know, all the other uh, tournament series, PCA, EPT, WPT, the numbers are down. And the one that's really kind of scary is the Google search trends. If you type in Google, if you type in poker into like the Google trends and actually look to see the uh, search volume for poker, the numbers are down. Mm-hmm. Poker is in a decline right now, but I feel like, I feel like change is right around the corner. <laughs> You know, I think that uh, we, we, we might be looking at, you know, a few other states getting to the legalization game. I also think that this Twitch thing could really have a, a profound effect on the game. I, I love the, the initiatives that, that Dreyfus is doing, Alex Dreyfus, with like the, the uh, Global Poker League and the, you know, the, 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 the World Cup of Poker. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that there are some, there's still quite a bit of problems that we have to change and address, in, you know, within our industry. But I do. I, I feel more optimistic about the outlook of poker right now, even though we do continue to be declining. Uh, and smart money, if you're going to say over under on uh, whether the main event has more or less entries than last year, I mean, I think that the smart money is less. Okay. You know, I read a really good treatment of it by, by Donnie Peters not too long ago on Poker News, where he you know showed the numbers and the trend, and uh, but. You know, 64, 6,300 people putting up $10,000. That's still pretty good. You know, people yeah. keep on talking about how, how tough it is to make it as a poker player these days. They weren't around in the late 90s, you know, when, like, <laughs> the, there was, like, nothing going on. Where, like, oh, my gosh, rounders just transformed poker. And now there's going to be, can you believe it, 800 people in the main event. It, like poker mm-hmm. is exploding and it's like you know now we look at this and say well it's in a decline and it is but this is huge poker is huge right now and it's gonna i i feel more optimistic about the outlook of poker and also my place in it than i ever have yeah i mean you've obviously been doing the twitch show getting a lot of you know traction with that and you know it seems like you know obviously the things that happened in your past you know with the, with poker spot and stuff but the, i think the book really you did a great job in there talking about that situation you know people are starting to get past some of those things and you know obviously the the issues that you had you know with the, with your health and so yeah, on yeah i uh, think you know, so. is it is it you know do you feel like people are are starting to warm up to you and maybe that that the ones that were cold to you are starting to kind of come around a little bit and say you know this is a different touch point i think so mark you know when i look back at my own history i mean i, I wouldn't have liked myself as a teenager you know, and like young 21, 22 year old kid, all the confidence in the world and not really the skills to match it. Mm. Um, I, I, I can, you know, people change, but it takes a long, long, long time to change, you know. So I've been, in, I've been you know, roaming these halls since the World Series has been here every single year. And before that, Binion's. Um, 
I feel like I've, I've definitely matured as a player and as a person. And uh, I think that people are starting to say, you know what? Enough time has passed that you know, after, like, I think it's 10 years, every single cell in your body is different. You, are, you actually are a different person, you know? And, like, how much do you really have in common with that person that you were 15 years ago? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's similarities for sure. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, That's but, good uh, stuff. Yeah. 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 So of course, how many events are you going to be playing this world series? Uh, uh I'm scheduled for 40, but hopefully only about 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I, if I play 40 events, it's going to be a really bad summer, but, uh, I've got a lot of shots and this year I'm kind of going more for the bracelet hunt rather than the, uh, you know, the ROI figures. Uh, l- you know, last year I played, uh, almost ex- exclusively the, the the large field no limit hold'em events. Uh, this year, playing much more mixed games like uh, you know Raz and Stud High Low and pretty much you know everything non hold'em that's 3K and under is going to.